everyone. Welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in pop culture. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Hi guys. Everyone. Today we're going to talk about a royal playlist curated by Idris Elba and Meghan Markle and the burnout epidemic taking over America. Plus, singer songwriter Drake Bell joins the table. But first. But first, we have some ice cream at the table provided by Dasher and Crank a Wynwood-based ice cream shop that has a bright pink stand at the Gansevoort Meatpacking Hotel. A two-time winner of Miami's Best Ice Cream, Dasher and Crank features fun flavors and some boozy ice cream floats, too. Ooh. This is so yeah. good. What do we have? We have babka and cream. That's okay, pretty that's exciting. Fine. Okay, fine. And there's Lemon Speculus. Who has Lemon mm. Speculus? I think that's Lemon Speculus. Mm, me. This is some sort this of beautiful This purple is kind of um, This is some of the best case. ice cream I've ever had. Try? Anyone want to try yeah, it? Guys, I eat a lot of ice cream. You do? You had ice cream this weekend? I had ice cream this weekend. Yeah. What mm. flavor is your flavor of choice? Uh, oh, usually I do like a... I think that's the... Oh, God. Ube, Ube vegan ice cream though, with oh, Filipino purple yams and coconut. I taste both of that in there. Mm, mm, oh, that's mm, really mm, good. Mm, mm, Dasher and crank. God. Guys, I'm very lactose intolerant, so I'm going to have two bites and put this down. Miami's best ice cream in New York City. Mm. So good. So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it's like watching us eat ice cream. Mm, yeah. Mm, 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 uh, mm, 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 mm. That's your crank. Give it to me. <laughs> well, the city that never sleeps came to a standstill on Saturday due to a massive blackout that plunged the west side of Manhattan into darkness. But the show must go on, and that's what happened as Broadway shows took to the streets to continue performances while a couple tied the knot outside the Plaza Hotel after their wedding was interrupted. Ah. Uh. I want to point out in that video that's Andre DeShields, who's like a Broadway great, and he's in Hades Town. And Hades Town is such a, like a dynamic show, anyways. But I feel like being with them in a crowd would be, make it even cooler. Yeah, I mean, I watched that video probably like five times on loop, and I got so like so much FOMO oh, yeah. because he's like so cool and so hot. He's so cool. <laughs> like he's like eighty thousand years old, and I'm like still can get. <laughs> he's it. legit in his seventies, and when he walks out, we saw the show together. He walks out, and he just has this swag, and it almost feels like you're at a party. So I can. Imagine being on the street, you're like, yeah, let's fucking burn this place down. It's right. fantastic. Anytime there's a blackout <laughs> in New York City, it gets really scary. Yeah. And people, like, the streets go wild. Anything can happen. Well, I think, I, I think, <laughs> I think it's always going to be the Dark Knight Rises, that scene where people are being pulled out of their buildings. <laughs> Doormen are attacking the rich. Oh my God. It's, no one thinks that? No. So I was not here. So I was, I was not in the city. But, uh, but it was actually, though people do fear for the worst, and, Governor Cuomo is very upset and wants to investigate Con Ed for what happened. But yeah. like, luckily, New York kind of actually came together and had very positive experiences. Like, um, some of the every sh like the Broadway shows, there was this choir that sang out yeah. like on the streets. It was actually a very New York moment. It was uh, another Broadway show. Shoshana Bean from Waitress. Her voice literally fills can fill any space it's in. So she was singing outside, and it was like just like she was on stage. Like her voice was that clear and that beautiful. And then we have some of um, people here that they were supposed to go to shows, they got canceled. One person's show didn't though. I think Beetlejuice went mm -hmm. unencumbered. Of course. Yeah. Well, Beetlejuice is dealing with dead fear. It's magic. Yeah. But I felt bad for people at the J-Lo concert. She was shut off mid-song apparently. Oh. Tragic. Yeah. Mid-song? Mid she's rescheduling yeah. the forms at mid-song apparently. You know, she's booty shaking, doing cartwheels, J-Lo style, and it wow. goes black. That's wow. scary. You can get injured. Get yeah, very injured. Yeah, no, J-Lo is safe. I believe he's Dave Chappelle safe. had a big show that he canceled, but then he went down to the cellar and was performing there. See, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New Yorkers are very, like, resilient. Like, they, I was uh, completely unaffected, though, by the way. Like, the only thing, like, I was supposed to take the train downtown, mm -hmm. and it was, like, a 20-minute wait, and I was like, ugh, what's happening? <laughs> and I, like, took a taxi, and then I get a text from my mom. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, okay, this is bigger than my right. train. Like, yeah. Almost 3,000 people on the, were affected on the subway. Yeah. And then they were, apparently, 911 got 900 calls, 400 of them were people trapped in elevators. Oh. Which Yikes. is a nightmare. Which is Ali's literal personal nightmare. That's a nightmare. That is a yeah. nightmare. Wait, because what if you what do you what do you what do you do? You do nothing. I don't know. What if you have to go to the bathroom? Write you some go. fanfic. Write some fanfic, yeah. Yeah. I'm really scared of getting trapped in an elevator during a blackout. I think I'm most actually people like are. really excited. <laughs> like I just always have these fantasies of getting trapped in an elevator with like the person of my dreams, mm. you know? Aww. Like it'd be so exciting. You're in an elevator and the Emma Roberts is there and you're like, this is it. And then you have to pee. <laughs> but the reality is like, you get stuck in an elevator with somebody eating ice cream and they're lactose intolerant. That's what yeah. really happens, you know? Okay, well, I heard farts, the bacteria, when you inhale it, is actually good for your health, okay. so really? silver lining. Have you guys been, ever been caught in a black? The only one I was ever caught it was in Brentwood um, a year or a half ago, whatever, and that was very chill, was Brent. It was Really not every Saturday night when you drink too much? <laughs> oh! He's like that right now, because... <laughs> <laughs> that does happen, too. But I, I get through that, though. So I just, you know, keep yeah. on drinking until I come out of it. 
I'm from the Midwest, so losing power is something that happens in the summer during storm season anyway, so like, yeah. Yeah, losing yeah, power was fun growing up. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, all the stuff in the fridge or the freezer would like melt, and my mom would be like, eat all the shit. <laughs> right. Right. That was fun. It's usually a party. I did realize that the, the hummus and carrots I have in my fridge, the only food I have in my apartment, is not good enough, and there's a blackout, <laughs> so I should get some groceries. Mm. You need some canned goods, just in case. So your yeah. apartment was affected. No, I, luckily I'm in Chelsea. I got an email from my building, and they're like, we conserve power. We don't know if we could be affected. But I was not in the city, so. Gotcha. Jesus. Well, guys, moving on. Build Brunch is excited to celebrate Amazon Prime Day. Today and tomorrow, Prime members can expect some great sales and major deals on fun new products. Yeah. Who plans on shopping today for Prime Day? Clap, clap your hands. OK. About half about some Prime shoppers. What are you looking for in specific? Because <laughs> I can sell it out of my van. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've got I didn't DVDs. know like, what people were looking CDs. for. Yeah, I got VCRs. VCRs. I can do my own VCR repair. I got <laughs> socks, big socks, little socks, wide socks. Shampoo, deodorant. You got it all in Deodorant. 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 The coffee, <laughs> the coffee van is full of supplies. Yeah. But I will say, since I just said I did move into a new apartment, I will be getting stuff on Amazon Prime. I really want to get a Roomba. Yeah. And I saw oh there is a Roomba discount right now, and I will be yeah. buying that after the show. Because I need a Roomba. Do you Roomba? work? What? Yeah. The Roombas work, though. They yes. do. And they're also just like little tiny, like robotic friends. Yes. That, like, if you drop food on the floor and you're like, oh, five second rule, the Roomba will be like, you're better than that. <laughs> and you're I, like, okay, thank God. I want to get the Roomba, but I'm afraid it'll scare my dog. I think you will become friends with your dog. Yeah. Not my dog. Not your dog. Not your dog. <laughs> not your dog. Um, I do love, I did check out some of the deals. I used to write about personal finance, so this is a really big deal for a lot of people. And I always find that the biggest deals you're going to get are on Amazon products. So whether that's like an Amazon Echo or one of their like fire sticks, those I think are the places where you can save the most money because they severely discount that stuff. Um, I also want to suggest that people check out a site called Camel, Camel, Camel. And that gives you the price history of any product that you're interested in buying. So you can actually see how deep that discount is and if it's worth buying today. Mm -hmm. It's like a little two cents. I, yeah, I'm curious if it's worth buying paper towels. Yeah. In bulk, probably. Yeah. In bulk. For sure. Because I would just like to buy just like tons of them. That's you know what I do? I do their subscribe and save. You and then that? you get something shipped like monthly. I do that with seltzer and stuff so that mm. I save like a little bit yeah. of money and then I don't have to remember to get seltzer. I just have it mailed to me all the time. Oh, yeah. maybe I should do that. The grocery shopping that Amazon enables now is pretty spectacular. Oh, yeah. You and do not have to leave your apartment. Yeah. If you want to be a recluse and not leave, Amazon will allow that for you. And that's a freedom that Amazon gives. <laughs> yeah, and that's a good life. Yeah. Staying in your apartment. Happy shopping, guys. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to music choices for the Royal Wedding, Meghan Markle knew exactly who to call. In a recent interview on BBC Radio 1 Extra, actor Idris Elba dished on his DJing gig at the receptions, revealing that Meghan Markle had specific song requests, including Whitney Houston and an array of rap songs. <laughs> Um, who doesn't have Whitney Houston on their who wedding Who doesn't playlist? have I yeah. Want to Dance with Somebody on yeah. their wedding playlist? So that's not a big no. reveal, Idris, but congrats to Megan that she loves Whitney. I'm going like to guarantee that she had I Want to Dance with Somebody, Shout, and the Cha-Cha Slide. Like, those are at every wedding, no matter yeah. who you are. And the electric slide, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Cha-Cha. Wait, how does electric slide go? You can do it. It's electric. Oh, uh, 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 I don't think that's, that's on. I don't know what the words are. Wow. But I know the moves. I love you. That's There's someone matters. in the audience who's actually just doing the entire electric. <laughs> <laughs> like, get up here. Come on. Uh, to the right. No. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you could invite people to just dance. No, the cha cha slide is like an Take elevated. It back now, y'all. Yeah, that's an elevated electric slide. Yeah, I think the cha cha slide is a lot more popular than the electric slide. Yeah, well, because white people can. Yeah, the electric slide is at every black function. You need to know how to dance the electric slide. You need to have rhythm. When you're white, you can just do. Right, but let's stop. <laughs> I can do this. Yeah, Charlie fantastic. Brown. What Charlie is that? Brown. <laughs> the left. Like so, that's so that's more popular because white people are told how to dance to that yeah, song. Yeah, it's more. There's oh, more. Yeah. There's more directed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Less on feeling, more on step. Right, and you know what? The, these white British people, they were they need direction to dance. No way the Queen can break. Uh, I love her. Yeah. I love her, but the Queen does not look like she can break it down. You don't yeah. know. You don't know true, the Queen. True. True. <laughs> I do watch The Crown, though. I don't think they would dance like that, The Crown. Yikes. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but you know what? I think this was, must have been like such a hot wedding because this like is probably the only wedding where when you like hook up with the DJ, you don't feel terrible afterwards. Right. So you see yourself on, you're like, this was the moment of a lifetime. I won. Like usually, usually like when you fuck a DJ afterwards, you're like, okay, I gotta get an STD check. <laughs> I gotta call on my friends and tell them that I have to be like walk down the steps and get shame bells on me. Shame. 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 Yeah. 
But he wouldn't reveal which rap song she requested. He did say West Coast. West no. Coast. Didn't he? Yeah. he probably that leads me to believe in like a little NBA. Kendrick Lamar, maybe some Tupac. She knows West Coast. She does. That's where she's from. I can't imagine any of the royal family rocking out to that. Ugh. But I, I hope they did. But I if mean, anybody's gonna do it, it is Idris Elba. I don't know. Do you guys follow how much he's into music and DJing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He has like a whole series on Netflix about it, and then he wrote this movie it's and directed so this bad. movie called Yardy, which the is the series all... is so bad. Yeah. Is it really? But he's not wearing a shirt for a lot of it. And he's <laughs> like, the series is his like... nipples are great. Like great symmetry there. They're like prominent. They have their own personalities. Yeah, that's that's like positive. even his own DJ. Like his own nipples can be their own DJs. I feel like I could see him turn. I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I was just more reiterating that this isn't like a flash in the pan thing. For right. Him. No, yeah, we he's know like that. a musician we know that. first. Oh yeah, I don't think like anyone he... doesn't acknowledge that Wait. he's like a settled DJ. I think, guys, just so you know, CBD can't get you hot. I <laughs> know, <laughs> unless you put CBD hummus in your vagina. <laughs> you guys watch the show. You know that we've talked about this yeah. before. But did you guys see that Meghan Markle and Beyonce met at the Lion oh. King premiere? Oh my god! And Beyonce looked like the queen that she is <laughs> meeting Meghan. But I don't like, know why I care so much. I literally I don't watched the I don't video know why of them. You care so much I either. watched the video of them meeting like six times on a loop, yeah. and I was like very emotionally invested in this meeting, and I don't actually understand why. But it look, felt they're gonna. Important. Up. Because like, think, think about this, Meghan Markle, uh, how many years ago, was the D-list actress on Suits. Damn. Right, and now she's the Duchess <laughs> of Sussex. It's true. That's she's a cold. Talented, wonderful woman, but she I'm was. I'm still over she... calling Meghan Markle a D-list actress from Suits. Like, we get it. She's married. She's in the royal family now. I don't think we need to remind people every episode that she was from Suits, and now she's a royalty. I, I Hello, think we do. we've all been a part of the news for the past two and a half yeah. years. I don't know. What okay. happened? I am just, I was on this emotional journey, what this I'm means gonna to both right of now. them. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna sit this one out because I tried to bring a fresh new conversation about Idris Elba's nipples, and that's not in the news enough, and everybody was like, well, I don't know what's happening, CBD girl, yeah, and I was right. like, I'm not high, I'm just eccentric. No, let's go back to, <laughs> let's go back to nipples DJing, because that's truly more interesting than talking about Meghan Markle becoming royalty once again. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about her beating Beyonce, who was American royalty, yeah. and these two queens met, and it felt really important. I don't know. You know what? I'll just eat my ice cream and you do it. Yeah, you guys and, fight. And I'll take us to the next story because this tension is mm -hmm. just too much. Yeah. Too much on your plate? Well, a new article from Elemental explores the burnout epidemic among American workers. Let's break it down. Mm -mm -mm. One thing that I thought was interesting about this article was about the paralysis people feel when they have to do small tasks, yeah. like laundry or pick up a prescription or order paper towels. For some reason, I can check big things off my to-do list, but small things are much more difficult. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I feel say, like I alienated everyone on the couch. No. no. I think what <laughs> you're bringing up what the woman described in that BuzzFeed article where she's talking about burnout, and it brings us to the, the larger issue of like, is this a real condition or is it just like millennials complaining about working too much? But the World Health Organization did signify it as syndrome. a syndrome in May. So people are starting to recognize that it is something, but it's like, you have to have chronic, what is it, chronic unchanged stress, um, lack of interest, exhaustion, and it's all work focus. So this doesn't mean in your general life, because that might be something more like depression. Right. This is like work focus, all those triggers. I think there are like two facets to this discussion, which I think is really interesting. One is that often people complain, oh, millennials just feel this because they get tired easily, they get yeah. bored, they get tired of their jobs. I recognize that with a lot of my friends, like after a year or a year and a half, they're like, I want to move on, I want yeah. more, I want more. And adults often say, you're asking for too much. People to usually do jobs for five years and then they move on, like get over it. But often I think what this also is exposing is that because we have email and the nine to five aspect of jobs doesn't really exist anymore, yeah. especially if you're an assistant, if you're doing anything on email, you're always getting emails, so you're always getting reminded of what work is. And I think that's having to do with this because we can talk about how, I mean, I think we should have three day weekends and four day weeks. I yeah. think that'd be more, make people more productive. But when you're on the beach or you're trying to relax on a weekend during the summer and you're just constantly getting bombarded by emails, reminders that you still have work to do, you can never really sign never off. Never escape it. And it's, it's funny, um, in France, they passed this um, right to disconnect law, which yeah. means like, employers cannot get mad at their employees for not responding to emails when the they're on vacation on weekends, yeah. which I think is really great. Apparently New York City's looking at that too, because that is awesome. I mean, it's hard when you're an assistant. I remember because when you, your boss's life you're keeping track of, especially if like you're planning their husband's birthday party and you're worried yeah. that the food's getting delivered, like that was a very stressful Saturday for me. But 
I, this, if people can start disconnecting, it, I think will allow more productivity, more happiness in people's jobs. But it's so hard to disconnect because we spend nine to five on our screens, and then now more in our culture, our downtime is watching Netflix or more right. screen time. So what so do it's we like, do? Even when we leave screens, our downtime is more screens, which I, is breeding a lot of like anxiety and depression in people. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> Santa's just like, I know. Yeah, and I'm just looking at these poor faces and they're like, we wish we were staring at more screens right now. This live show is killing us. Well, I know, I, really I, I don't know what to like do. Them. Yeah, they love us, look. <laughs> oh my God, I love you. Um, I think it's screens are so hard, but I don't know what to do. Like, I think we just need to like push through and keep on trying our best. Yeah, I think there's something to disconnecting. I've, I've been told by four friends this year that I'm really bad at text. Mm. And I actually take it as a compliment because I have this thing where I'm home now and I like put my phone away and I try to read more and I honestly do not respond to emails after work. And these are things I had to do for myself because I was starting to feel burned out. Like right. at the end of last year, I was just fucking tired all the time. And I was like, what can I do to make my life a little better? And that's less screen times. I've started trying to meditate, which me and Ali have talked about. Like, just being a little more aware of how you spend your time, I think, would help. Yeah, I mean, I read on my phone, but uh, even that, I'm like, I want to start getting books hardcover again because yeah. I don't want to be on my phone. I, I, I had to, I was having, I was getting so much anxiety because all I would do would be at work, listen to podcasts, yeah. and they constantly barrage either political news or news about work, and I had to literally, like, put my phone away. Like, I went on a bike ride this weekend, my phone was not near me, yeah, that's what no I'm headphones in, and I just listened to nature. It was Whoa. wild. How did I you heard feel? birds. Yeah. I heard birds. It was good. Birds I felt suddenly <laughs> up here. I wow. felt relaxed. I felt like a Disney princess talking to animals. I don't know. It yeah. felt good. I guess I just don't feel like that addicted to my phone. Like You're I don't good know what it. social media you guys are on that's so good. But like <laughs> literally I like mm -hmm. tell me the website so I can get hooked because honestly Instagram is trash. Twitter like nobody's funny anymore. <laughs> like I was addicted in 2013 when the internet was chill, but like now it sucks. Like I'm surprised you guys haven't been like fucking jamming up with birds and like <laughs> hanging out like groping trees cuz that's where it's at now, man. Yeah, the internet been, is dead. You've been leading that trend for a while. Wow. I always I see, you groping a I, I see you groping trees all the time. Like, God, Shannon yeah. gets it. Get in there and be like, doo, 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 doo. I know? was waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so much better. The vibe is so cool. And you learn more. Everybody's just like, oh, what? We got to make a joke about this burnout thing. And you see the same joke like a million times. And I'm like, this feed is fucking yeah, that, stale. That does get... The I same. I can't find the, myself addicted to the that. The Twitter, so um, Paul Ryan did something dumb the other weekend, like, oh, I hate Trump now. We're like, get over it. Everyone said the exact same spineless yeah. Ryan joke. Like, seriously, it's not the new take, and yeah. you're all doing the same joke. I'm like, it's, there's a search feature. Like, at least use right. it just for 10 seconds before you put out the same boring ass joke. Just like, check. If 10 other people have already done it, don't do it. Yeah. You make yourself look so cheap. Right. Basic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for candid coffee. It was so important. Each week we will answer a question that comes from you, our viewers. The question can be about anything. If you want us to answer something, tweet us at Bill Brunch. Now let's get candid. Here's the question of the week. From Gabrielle from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Asks, do you believe in past lives? Ooh. Ooh. I, this is one of my favorite conversations to have, actually. You start us off then, Brittany. Um, I do believe in past lives. And uh, actually, I used to produce at a talk show. And we interviewed this woman who was a past life regressionist. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's <laughs> this um, different sort of hypnotism where they can put you under and they can take you back and you can like channel into your past lives and like learn those experiences. And then the things you glean from those kind of dictate your life now and how you move forward. And, what and I've always just been wildly fascinated, but like a little too afraid to do it myself. Oh, she didn't analyze you? No, I didn't do it, but she is somebody who does, like she'd made a practice of oh. it. So she was just saying how it helps a lot of people like in their current lives to explore their past lives. Very and people were everything from like, Rulers to like children, like it's just crazy. <laughs> Rulers to slaves. Yeah, <laughs> the whole gamut. So I'm fascinated by this concept, yeah. Yeah, I totally believe in past lives, especially when you find like little kids that are weirdly very mature mm. and do things that are not like t like easy to learn. Like when little kids are like one years old and they're playing the violin perfectly, you're like, okay, you past life motherfucker. Like, <laughs> right. You're freaking me out right now. You cheated. Yeah, and there's yeah. also like, I feel like, I have um, friends whose kids do weird things like 
um, there's this one girl, she, her kid was like looking underneath the couch cushions and she was like, what are you doing? And her baby's only like two and she's like looking for change. Oh. But no one's ever taught her to look yeah. for change in the couch. And then she like took a sip of water and was like, mm, coffee. <sighs> and did this like old person thing. Mm -hmm. But like nobody in their family drinks coffee around her. So, so it's like, it's just like an old little man is in this little girl's <laughs> body. And he's like, I need to find change. I need to drink coffee. That's and you're like, what's so happening? <laughs> Sometimes when I... I love that. Wait, who is that girl? What kind of, is her name Isabella? No. Oh, so I know another girl that seems like an old man. Um, <laughs> oh, this is a baby. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. No, like, two-year-old. Um, so... What if we hang out with the same baby? Yeah, I was like, it would be Whoa. Yeah, Isabel. I'd be like, yo, that's messed up. I thought I had exclusive baby contact. <laughs> um, you know, this is something I kind of see when I have a lot of friends that they go through life, it seems like they go through life so painlessly, they don't have anxieties, they don't have worries. <laughs> and lots of times I look at them and I think to myself, this is their first life. Right. They don't know. They don't know any better. And I feel like I am so stressed with life and I, and I feel it so much on my, in my neck. And I think this must be <laughs> my 10th life. I would actually think the reverse. I think if you were more chill, you've lived more oh, lives, so you know yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Like, oh, I agree back. because yeah. I think with each life, you like your consciousness should get a little higher, and you yeah. should be a little more like self-actualized. You know what? With but that kind of implies that the people I'm looking at have this sort of like profound and sense of zen, and they're more just like ignorance and bliss, <laughs> okay. right. and just okay. life keeps slapping them in the face, and they're like, ha ha. <laughs> And I'm always like, oh, it's your first go at it. Yeah. You know? You'll learn. So it's kind of, yeah. Got it. You know? So that's, yeah. I feel like Lucas is like second life. Oh. <laughs> Little baby. Whoa, I just got the guy, the guy that a lot of lives before. I have really? a friend who's like that. I think that. so. Oh, you that. think? I have a friend who is like how you describe, like, uh, uh, and you no, think she's you. on her first life. It's not you. It's, 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 it's a not girl. You. <laughs> it's not you. No, no. She's like, I love her. She's my best friend, but she's like, you know, she's doy doy. Like, she's <laughs> great. And that's why she's a, a, a best friend. But she went to one of those people and she had like at least. 10 lives See? and they were very dark pasts. Yeah. Like most of them ended up in like very sad scenarios. Well, Shirley MacLaine, you guys know the legendary actress. Yeah, She's we're familiar. Really, <laughs> some people don't know who Shirley MacLaine is. She is really, really deep into past life regressions. I, she had this amazing Oprah episode where she talked about it and she was undergoing some other sort of hydrotherapy where they like dip you into water and she started regressing back into past lives and she's like, I have been hung in many of my past lives. Like that one action in this current life, <laughs> She basically had been hung in previous lives and she could like flash back and like tap into that. Wow. I was like, that's terrifying. She also claims to have seen the city of Atlantis sink into the Atlantic. Okay, Ocean. Shirley McLean. Wow. Shirley McLean. Shirley McLean. I love that you took the dark, the dark route because I, I thought I was going to be dark and then you're like, boom. No, I told you, I'm really into this stuff. I think it's so fascinating just the idea of like exploring different consciousness and. Well, is, well. is it. Is I want to hear about your lives. I'm waiting. Well, is it Buddhism that believes in reincarnation yeah. and you come back if, based <laughs> off your karma and the previous yeah. life, whatever? So if you were bad and this like yeah. come back as like an ant or whatever. Yeah. I kind of like that. I want to imagine bad people I encounter on the subway who are rude will come back as like the rats that yeah. infest the Pizza subway. Rat. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think I I believe in past lives because I have such an interest in history and like, oh, mm -hmm. I, I like to believe oh. I was around during the, the Middle Ages with like King Arthur and stuff, yeah. you know? And the papal times. And the, pap and the, the Renaissance. I want to imagine I was yeah. both. I Maybe have, you were the first pope. I could have been. That could be why yeah, you're drawn to St. Peter. Could I have been St. Peter? There's definitely something that, <laughs> you know what? I think something happened with you in the Catholic Church. Oh, Something happened in a past life, for sure. Without oh my God, Lucas. <laughs> we don't know what, but. Spotlight too. <laughs> oh God. Oh. No, maybe, who was a good guy? It was, I was probably a bad guy. I no, like, no, I think you were a good guy. No, I <laughs> Maybe you were a nun that saved the yes, I was, yes, I, Don't do that. I, I love, guys, yeah. I love nuns. I think you were I a nun. I love nuns, and that could be why Always identify with nuns. It could be. I think so. You I are am a one. Nun. I'm a nun. Yeah, you were like a beautiful, positive nun. Yes, yeah, so we tried like to Jessica help Jessica Lang, <laughs> and you were just like super sexy. You're like, I'm too sexy for this shit. I'm a and sexy And then you saw nun. bad things happening. You were like, not on my watch. Mm -hmm. <gasps> what do you think I was in a past life? You were probably that pope that was messing with you. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. also say <laughs> that Michael we. <laughs> they also say that like your past lives are tied to this life. I yeah. think so, like, I was like in, a in this life we're all friends, but maybe in a past life Shannon was my mom and you were my brother. Brother, and you like they say your spirits like so circle around the same people. I each was life. all of your mom. So if he was a nun and you were the pope, and like I was like some poor commoner in the streets that you help save or something. Aww. Or maybe a queen. So nice. <laughs> I'm okay with being a peasant. I'm a, currently a peasant, so you know, watch out. <laughs> 
Anyway, now it's time for today's guest. You know Drake Bell for his work on Nickelodeon's hit sitcom Drake and Josh, and now he's making music. Drake recently released the official video for his Latin-inspired single, Fuego Lento, which captures the colorful sounds and sights of Latin America. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch welcome to Drake Bell. Yes, thanks for having me. Thank you. Can we like point out your shoes? Yeah, I was gonna say those oh, shoes are oh, so sure. right. oh, These are my Elton John Rocket Man shoes. Oh, those, are, those are awesome. What so if I just cool. spilled ice cream on them? Would you hate me? <laughs> that's that'd be rude. <laughs> I, I, that's that's yeah, not very. That's yeah, not a nice yeah, welcome. You're like those are rude. But Unless a know, food fight starts and then the oh, audience gets involved and then it's a whole other show mm. and that would be okay. Then then, you, then, then that's, that's that's what a good I thing. wanted. I just wanted a breakout moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. no big deal. Turn it up. You're so cool. Okay, but first <laughs> we need to talk about Fuego Lento. Yeah. Your song. Tell us about. The oh yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Not for nipples. <laughs> you brought up nipples. It was your idea. That was. I'm sorry. It's always on my brain. You're obsessed. Please. Yeah, Stop. yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, Fuego Lento. Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah, yes, I released a new song recently, uh, and it's uh, it's pretty exciting. It's the first song that I've uh, sung uh, in Spanish, which wow. is really cool. I have a big, for some reason, I don't know, I released uh, some records years ago, and they did really well in uh, in Mexico and, and, and all over Latin America. And, and so I started going down there and touring a lot, and, and through my experiences down there, working with other artists and playing these big festivals and seeing all these other... Uh, styles of music and and the way the audiences were reacting and, and all of that, uh, I sort of it, you know I guess it just rubbed off on me. And then when I got back to the studio, I was like, man, I want to do something that sounds like you know what I've been hearing and mm -hmm. and and also because the fans like I would do cover songs in Spanish and and things and the, and the fans would would lose it and they would love it. And so I was like, man, it'd be really cool to be able to do something original uh, in their language, like like as like a, a give back to them for all of the stuff that they've done for us and everything. So. Um, so I went to the studio and we kind of wrote this song and I got some friends together to kind of help me make sure that I didn't sound, you know, terrible. Right. Uh, my, or my accent or my accent was yeah. all bad and everything. So, um, so yeah, so we had, had, had some friends come in and help, help out and, uh, recorded the tune and, and put it out and it just smashed. Like, it's just doing crazy. It's like, wow. yeah, it's one of the biggest songs we put out yeah. and, and, uh, and it's really taken over down there. So it's, it's really cool. And then we just re re recently released a, uh, a music video for it that's doing doing really well and, and yeah so that's it's, it's, awesome it's exciting it's and did you adventure, so, yeah. so did you have to learn a lot of Spanish before recording and writing the track well I mean I know enough to kind of get around you know because uh, I've been going down there for for so many years and and spending so much time down there and I grew up in Southern California so um, I've kind of been inundated with with uh, Spanish culture and Mexican culture for, for my whole life um, far from speaking it fluently right but I, I knew enough to where I wasn't coming into a completely green and where I'm like, how do, you know, what is the accent or how do I pronounce these words mm -hmm. or anything like that? It was just, you know, some words I didn't know that we were, that we were uh, writing or singing. And I, I, the way we'd write is I'm like, oh, I want to say this. And like, what, how would that make sense in Spanish? And then, oh, well, we'd have to change it around like this. So it was sort of like a collaborative effort um, that way. And then when I went into sing, I, I, I knew enough Spanish to kind of, uh, to get around sounding terrible. You know? yeah. <laughs> and you even rap in Spanish. I I rap in Spanish. That's what I was told. <laughs> I don't. I no. I don't. But I could if you I want to. Try. I, I believe in you. No, I, you I don't. They're making in this track. You even rap Spanish. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? It sounds like rapping. It sounds well, like yeah, it's, just it's just fast singing. It's just fast singing. You're yeah. so tricky. No, I'm not. No, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's not wrong. Shady. It could sound like I guess it could sound like rapping. Yeah, there is because I did a full hey, can Spanish. Can we fire version. the producer? <laughs> yeah. No, I did a full Spanish version. So there, so there's a there's, there's a there's a yeah. version that's the chorus. It's like Spanglish. Uh -huh. The chorus is in Spanish, and then there's a full Spanish version. And in, and yeah, in some of the. Uh, Spanish version, there's some fast talky parts. That, fast I guess, talking. Yeah, One you know what? We'll graduate to rap. All right, yeah, <laughs> we're, right now we're at fast talking, and soon there'll become like, there'll be added rhythm and, and uh, style, and then it'll be rap. Yeah. There you go. You mentioned the music video. You mm -hmm. filmed that in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? Because I, I mean, I love Mexico City. It's so Oh, gorgeous. yeah, isn't it great? Yeah. I love, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Um, reminds me a lot of New York, just kind of yeah. a little older. Uh, um, but yeah, it's a... Uh, it, Mexico City is amazing. The vibe, the culture, the the people, the it's 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 a very exciting place. So to be able to go out and 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 shoot the music video there um, and have like fans involved and 
and everything was was really cool. I mean, it's it's so beautiful. Yeah, and it makes the, and it makes it look like we spent a lot of money. Yeah, uh, <laughs> on locations and stuff. Did some fans come out and watch you guys? Film yeah, it? totally. Yeah. yeah, it was it was really cool. It was like an open set. We were kind of just tooling around uh, Mexico City and finding little spots, and then little crowds would gather and stuff. And uh, and yeah, it was, it was it was a lot of fun. What does it mean for you to have that fan base and for that fan base to like show up and be so supportive? Um, I mean, it's awesome. It's 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 really cool. It's it's. Uh, the first time we ever went down there, it was wild because you know, I'd released my second record, I think, and we were doing okay here. You know, we're doing like small mm -hmm. theaters, like we do. Uh, um, uh, theaters escaping my brain right now, like Roseland or okay. something like that. You know, like thousand, two thousand seats, whatever. And then we heard we we're going to go to Mexico and, and play a show, or like Beacon Theater, like the, yeah. those kind of things. And then I would. Uh, they were like, oh, we got, we got a tour in Mexico, and we're going to go to Guadalajara and Mexico City and Monterey and Puebla and stuff. And so my band was like, OK, great, cool. We're going to be playing, like, whatever, small shows out there, cool. And we get there, and they're like, we're playing the arenas and we're <laughs> soccer stadiums. And there's 20,000 seats sold out and, really? and all this stuff. And we're, we're, wow. We didn't even know, because we didn't, what, what are we going to ask for? You know, we're just like, another show, you know, yeah. get on an airplane, go to the thing. But then we go to sound check. And we're pulling up to the venue, and I'm like, is there like a mini venue underneath this venue that's like the small club? <laughs> a side that's stage. In, yeah, yeah. like a side stage or whatever. You know, and then we're going into sound check and everything, and we're looking at like, okay, so the first front row, like, so the, the first row will be filled, and like, what, how are we, we're gonna hire some extras, or yeah. how are we gonna get like people to fill this place? <laughs> CGI. Yeah, uh, exactly. Audience, but yeah. they're like, no, you have two sold out shows today, that's you know? And so we did a matinee wow. and a th So, I mean, it, it just took off out there. And, uh, and, um, and yeah, so it's, and, and, and it's cool out there because, well, really just anywhere outside of the United States, um, I just feel like sometimes in the States, we, we're so inundated. We have everything. Yeah. We have, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, and, and, and everybody, play, like, everybody plays in, at Madison Square Garden. Everybody plays in New York. You know, if you want to see somebody, they're going to come to New York sometime, you know. Mm -hmm. But for other parts of the world, they don't all, you know, maybe they don't, maybe this, their favorite artist doesn't go to, you know, that small island under Italy or that, mm -hmm. that small town, like Puebla. Like, how many, mm -hmm. you know, of their favorite artists are coming to these small cities? So when we, when we flew out there, it's like their, their reactions and their, their, there's like, no, oh, yeah, whatever, cool, we saw this show yesterday or we saw that thing yesterday we went and you know we got Disneyland and Universal around the corner <laughs> like big deal so it's it's like kind of a bigger deal when you go outside the country and, and see these uh, fans and stuff and the reactions are a lot more exciting and energetic that's so cool yeah so another genre you've been kind of exploring with your music is like hip hop can mm -hmm. you tell us about that and I feel like it's, it's interesting doing kind of Latin flavored music and then also doing hip hop as well I just like music man you know I, I, I kind of just like to make music that I like to listen to and, and so it's kind of hard to stay in a certain genre. I think that's why I never worked on labels, you know? I, I would get signed and I would make a record and then they would say, okay, time to make your follow-up record. And they would be like, right. whoa, what is, wait, no, 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 what is this? Like, you need to sound like this. And I'm like, no, but I already did that. Yeah. Like, that was the last record I already did. Like, why would mm -hmm. I make a record that sounds like the last album? And, and that's not the music that I'm into right now. Like, I, I like that music, but I'm, I'm kind of really into like all this. And, and then it kind of always is whoever I'm hanging out with or um, whatever music I'm really digging or listening to at that moment is sort of what I end up kind of being inspired by to go into the studio and I guess just put my spin on it. Mm -hmm. um, but like for example, like the hip hop stuff, you know, I was um, hanging out a lot with like Lil Pump and mm -hmm. and and like the Zan, like the Lil Zan crew, and like all <laughs> the, like just and like Tank God. I worked with Tank God who uh -huh. did Post Malone's Rockstar and and um, just like a bunch of these. You know, hip hop cats. And right. I was like, what, what, how am I finding myself in the room with these guys, you know? But then uh, I was just, I was just like, I don't know, I was just loving like the fashion and the music and the style and like everything. And, uh, yeah. and then eventually a conversation starts like, oh, well, we should do something. Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's get in the studio and do our own thing or something. And then, you know, a week later you're sitting in the studio and you're making a hip hop record. And you're right. like, okay, this is weird. But, but that's sort of right. the coolest music you hear. I feel like more and more artists are genre less. Mm -hmm. And you see like the coolest collaborations now that I feel like we didn't get. Absolutely. I mean, especially in the Latin market. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, Ev Jonas just released a new mm -hmm. re Latin record. Um, uh, Sean, you know, Sean mm -hmm. and Camilla doing the, the Senorita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, it's really the whole crossover. It's, and, and I think with, with social media and technology and, 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 and all of that, it's, it's making it so much easier for people to connect, uh, you know, different artists to connect. And also, 
just for fans not to say, wait, why is my rock and roll band, you know, for mm -hmm. example, like, uh, you know, Panic at the Disco, you know, for example, it's like, wait, why, I'm not a Taylor Swift, like, I, why right. are they connect, you know, but that would, you know, nowadays it's so natural for like, oh, they probably connected, mm -hmm. they probably liked something they one did, and then, then they got in a room and worked together and collabed, and now they have this song. And, and they both think spelling is fun, and so it <laughs> yeah, works. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. So, you know, you have like, um, a lot, it's a lot more uh, natural, I think, to a fan now to see artists crossing mm -hmm. paths and, 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 you know, it's like, look at Ed Sheeran. I mean, Ed Sheeran's records sound like... Everybody. Yeah, I mean, and also just you put on his album and from beginning to end, it sounds like 20 different styles mm -hmm. of music. You know, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that could play in the club. And, oh, this is what I want to listen to on a road trip with mm -hmm. my girlfriend. And, oh, this is what I want to listen to when my girlfriend doesn't come on a road trip <laughs> with me because she left me and I'm sad. You know, it's like he has something for everything and it's kind of all uh, encompassing, like all styles of music and yeah. genre lists, like you said. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I like when artists reinvent. It seems more genuine because mm -hmm. we as people grow and change. Like, yeah. It kind of makes sense that you as an artist would change and kind of incorporate more styles and stuff. Since you're also an actor too, when you perform live, do you, is it similar to like acting in a way? Or is it just more just like you're, you're, you're singing, you're um, on stage, you're... No, I mean, I, no, it's totally different. I mean, when you're acting, it's, Hmm. <laughs> when you're acting, you're 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 stifled, and you're and you're you're by by sort of everybody else's a, a, right. a, thoughts and opinions of how producers, something should, writers, should be portrayed. Yeah. Right? You know, you're you're taking someone's material and and interpreting it the best that you can, but you're always going to have, you know, twenty people saying, you know, oh, it should be this way, or you know, play it this way, or you know, I actually envisioned it this way, or you know say it this way, you know, so it's kind of more of a collaborative thing. Um, sometimes collaborative, sometimes you're, just getting, <laughs> sometimes you're just a prop being told what to do, right. Mo which is most of the time, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, and music is way more freeing. I mean, you are saying what you want to say, you're moving the way you want to move, you're interpreting things the way you, you feel. Um, it's a much more spontaneous fly by the seat, right. you know, no rehearsal. I like to have it, I like to have things spontaneous and live and, and reactionary um, as opposed to going out with a set list and okay and, and after the third song I say this and then after the <laughs> these two songs then we slow it down a bit and this is where I get on my soapbox and say my message to the audience <laughs> and then and then we go into this song and then, like that's just so cool if you saw our show on Thursday then you saw our show on Friday right. like that right. what why would you want to come back to the show you know and so my band it's always actually been a thing with my band uh, they're always like can we please get a set list today? Like, for this one show, just one show. I'm like, no, bro. We don't know what we don't know what we don't know what they want yet. Like, we'll figure it out when we get out there. And so my drummer's always like, what's next? <laughs> what's next? I'm like, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You know. But I like having everything more uh, spontaneous yeah. and kind of fly by the seat of your pants. That's really cool. You don't see that very often, I don't think. I, well, it's just I don't know. I think when things are are so rehearsed, and obviously with these bigger. Right. Shows like if you go and see Taylor or Drake or yeah. you know Beyonce or something, obviously everything is meticulously rehearsed and 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 and, and perfect. You know if you go see J Lo or something. Yeah. But I think with um, I don't know. I think that my my music has a little bit more of a like a rock and roll edge kind of. Uh, I I can kind of give an I don't I don't, I don't really give a you know kind of attitude to 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 the music as well as being perfectly uh, rehearsed. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, looking back at your career, of course, we all love Drake and Josh, and you and Josh Peck are like, I feel like all our best friends. Um, maybe I'm just speaking <laughs> for myself. But you guys, you know, you were on Grandfather, you, yeah. and you YouTube videos together. So you guys have worked together since yeah, totally. then. You guys are good friends. Yeah. It, I mean, we're in the, I guess, still in the era of rebooting. Will mm -hmm. and Grace, their Netflix is rebooting shows. Do you think there'll ever be a Drake and Josh reboot of some kind? <laughs> yeah. Yo, Josh, how much can I talk about? Um, um, exclusive. Uh, no. Well, well, did you just hang we, up on him? Before he answered? <laughs> you didn't say bye. Yeah. So rude. It. Yeah. No. Um. I. Well. I guess I could talk about this because yeah. it was in the press. We recently. So Josh has uh, come up with a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. Um. It's actually pretty brilliant. I think it's the best way. Uh. I think it's really the best way for us to come back. It's from one of the more creative ways to to do a reboot. I think and. And, uh, and yeah, so um, we will see if anything uh, comes from that. But hopefully, I, I think the fans would love it. And, uh, and I, I know that Josh and I are, are, uh, are excited and 
we would definitely uh, jump at the opportunity to, to do something creative and, and thoughtful. Not so much of a, you know, I don't think we would be excited to do a Drake and Josh college year. Right. Or, right. or you know, where are these characters now? But if there was some sort of creative way mm -hmm. to bring us together again um, and, and, and still, uh, um, Still, rem still have yeah. uh, reminiscent uh, things about Drake and Josh on the show, or whatever. Whatever it is, it's just got to have to be, you know. Because a lot of people ask, well, "Is it going to be Drake and Josh go go to college, or where are they now, or what is it?" And it's like that just doesn't yeah. turn us on as much as if it was like something a little bit turned on. It's you know something. Well, you're a little saying more he thought of something that you were on yeah. board with, right? Oh yeah. All right, so it's okay, looking so like it's a go. Ooh. We'll yeah. see. I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot we know of stars, it's not lot of stars have to align. A lot of stars have to align for that to happen. But um, but Things yeah, it happen on this show. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. We make dreams come. Well, yes. Yeah, we're send, really send good a letter at manifesting to your local, other people's uh, dreams. You know, right. <laughs> yeah. We haven't worked on ourselves yet. Other people's dreams. Yeah. But then back to your music. So what's next for you? So just release this music video. What what goals do you have the rest of the year? Um. Just more music. Uh, I'm about to, I'm out here doing a bunch of press for the song and then I go back on the road. I'm pretty much just always on the road. You know, I, I leave going. here next week, I'll be back in Mexico doing some shows in Mexico. Um, and then, yeah, and then just continuing uh, from there. That's great. That's Hope awesome. we can see you live yeah. sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah come out to yeah. the show, yeah. Woo, we'll be there. <laughs> Drake, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And you can listen to Fuego Lento on all music platforms and stream the music video online. That's all from us. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same table. Yeah, Googling.